Hello and welcome to Teaching Through Repertoire. This is Russian Music Box by Soon He Newbold. I'm going to play the viola part and go ahead and give a tutorial on everything that you might need to practice and focus on. So what's going to happen is here for the first five or six minutes, we're going to go through the piece, talk about some of the challenges, and then at the end, I'll play through the entire piece with the metronome. So if you're ready, get that viola. Here we go. Measure one. In the beginning, you have Davisi and you have Pizzicato. Pizzicato means to pull the string. Davisi means to divide the two notes that you see. So instead of playing both notes, you just pick one. Now in orchestra, two people share one music stand. There's someone that's called an outside player and someone that's called an inside player. The outside player plays the top note, the inside player plays the bottom note. But right now, based on what your director says and what your orchestra needs are, you might all play the top part you might all play the bottom part. It depends a little bit on if you have enough violas, enough violins, and so the director will tell you what to do. But that's just what the Italian means, and so what I always say is when you see Davisi and you're not sure, just play the top part. So we play both notes only if you don't see the Italian word Davisi. But since it's there, you only have to play one. Rest, 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 and so on. The trickiest thing is in measure 10. You have to go from pizzicato to arco. So you have th two options with your bow, and then you can do one little orchestra hack if those two options don't work for you. Option number one, you hold your bow like you've been taught, pizzicato. So you've got your three fingers around the frog, you make your L, and you're ready for pizzicato on the instrument. And then you very quickly go from pizzicato to arco, and you make that exchange. It's pretty hard to do when you have very little time to go from one note to the other. So there's a second option. Second option is don't hold your bow in the pizzicato bow hold. Hold it like you're playing, but just extend your first finger. It's a little riskier because you might miss the string if you're not used to it, but it's a very quick exchange because look, all I have to do is drop my first finger and then I'm back with my bow hold. So I can do this. Pretty easy. All I have to do is extend my first finger. But the risk, again, is that you might miss the string because you're not used to doing pizzicato with just your index finger. Most of us are used to anchoring our thumb. Third option, just drop the last note in measure 10 so you have a little bonus time to get your bow hand ready. It would sound like this. One, two, three, four. And that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do because sometimes composers give us things that are very hard to coordinate with our bodies and it's more important that you're on time for measure 11 than it is to play the last note of measure 10. Perfect world, you play it all. But those are three options for you so you can experiment to see which one works for you. Now, in measure 11, entertaining, in measure 11, we have our bow. In when we add our bow to the sound, we want a really beautiful full sound because now the composer is saying, I would like a warmer and fuller sound than with pizzicato. So place your bow flat on the string. And try and make every note full and resonant. There's a couple of left hand things you have to worry about. When you go from an open string to a string where you have to place one of your fingers, you have to learn to teach your hand to predict the next thing that's about to happen. So if I'm gonna play first finger B in measure 11 and then play open A, and then in measure 12 play F sharp. Watch what my hand does. While I'm playing open A, my third finger F sharp is ready because I want that string crossing to be smooth. So anytime you have to cross strings, you might try to play the two notes around that string crossing. So in measure 11 to measure 12, that would be open A to F sharp. If you can play both notes at the same time, terrific. That means that you can let your hand get there a little bit early so that you always have a very clean and clear attack to the note. Now something else that might be kind of tricky just for you to manage is in measure 14. It's the first whole note you have in this piece, and a whole note has to be sustained for four solid beats, which means you need a little heavier bow, a little slower bow, and you probably have to move your bow a little bit closer to the bridge so you can sustain the sound. What happens a lot with younger musicians is this. One, two, three, four. Bow moved too quickly, and it didn't sustain for the four full beats. So move your bow slightly closer to the bridge, let your arm be heavy, and here's a whole note. One, two, three, four. 
slower, heavier bow, fuller sustained sound. Something to practice as you're preparing for this piece. In measure 18 and in measure 15, you get to go to a whole new string. So in measure 15, we have a first finger A. Just as a reminder for note names, in measure 18, you have a high second finger B. Just as a reminder for note names. Now in measure 19, you have a different quality of sound. It should be very soft and light and supportive because the cellos actually have the melody here. So our sound should be sort of like this. I'm creating that sound by taking the weight out of my bow and speeding up the bow, moving a little bit closer to the fingerboard. And that allows it to have a little bit more of an airy combination of sound. Otherwise, it can get very compact. And that's not really the sound for the character of the music at this moment. If you look ahead, once again, we got that high second finger B in measure 22. Remind yourself these note names as you're playing so that your brain can automatically recognize them as you're going. In measure 25, new symbol. You have a horizontal bar and then a large number two above it. That means you have two measures of silence. So when you get to measure 25, you sit tall, you're mentally getting ready for 27, but you have to count to four two times. One two, three, four, two, two, three, four. No professional musician just counts all the way up to eight. So let's start practicing with good habits by counting the way we would if we were pros. We'd count one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, if you wanna organize it or just count to four two times. But avoid counting to eight, you'll end up confusing yourself and second guessing where you are in your counting mechanisms. When you get to 27, pretty exciting stuff, string crossings, almost every single measure. So get your hand ready for first finger B and third finger G. Uh, if you can play both notes at the same time, then a string crossing is no big deal. You'll notice my elbow's at a height where it's easy for me to access both strings. So if you're having a hard time playing on both the D and the A string, check your elbow and shoulder. Make sure that you haven't done something where the shoulder's too high or the elbow's too low. Nice and round motion from one string to the other. 28, no, no problem, C sharp to B. But then in 29, we gotta jump again. We have third finger G, first finger B, and then high D. What I would do is isolate these measures, make sure you're comfortable with the note names and where they are on the instrument, practice the measure just by itself. Until you feel very comfortable with it. Then learn all of those measures individually, start putting them together, then jump to the play along track. You've already done Divisi, so we don't have to talk about measure 34. But in 36, you have a whole note rest. That means you have four beats of silence. That little rectangle hangs from the fourth line. And in 27, you get the melody. That's right, violas, congratulations. It's the same concept as measure 11, but instead of playing first finger B, now you get to play high D. Pretty exciting stuff. You still have whole notes, you still have to sustain. So if you practice good habits with the early material, good news is, that repeats and you've already done the practicing for it. In measure 45, you know what divisi means, D-I-V, divided, top note, bottom note. The challenge is having your eyes follow one line or the other. Remember, your director will tell you what to play, especially if you're in a remote setting like we currently are here in 2021. But if you were in an orchestra, the outside players would play the top line, the inside players would play the bottom line. For now, default to the top line, just so your eyes get used to being able to delineate those two lines altogether. 53, you end with more pizzicatos. Rest, play, rest, play. Last note's a high second finger B, and now I'm gonna turn on the metronome and I'm gonna play through the entire piece with you. If you feel ready, go ahead and keep watching the video. If you don't feel ready, go ahead and practice some of those measures. You ready? Russian music box. The metronome is set to 120 beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, measure one. Rest, rest. One, two, measure three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, measure seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Measure eleven. Ready, go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, sustain, four, 
four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Measure nineteen and one, two, three, four. 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 Two, two, twenty-seven. One, two, three, four. time. If you're just starting, do yourself a favor. Go slow to learn fast. Also, remember that the YouTube playback settings can be changed so you can go faster or slower and you can adjust the playback just to suit your needs. Pretty great. Thanks so much for putting in the effort. Thanks for trying. Thanks for being your best selves. And remember, if you practice every day, by the end of the year, you'll be taller. 